Hi, my name is Tara LaMagna. I have eight years of experience in direct sales, and I have been doing virtual parties successfully for the last four to five years. I started doing them before it was even popular to do virtual parties. And along the way, I have learned so many tips that will help you increase your party sales. So today I'm gonna to share those with you and let's get rocking. So the first tip that I have for you is to communicate with your hosts. This is huge and many consultants uh, fail to communicate with their hosts as often as they should. They feel like they're being pushy or they're being annoying. You're not being annoying. You do this every day. You do these parties all the time and your host really doesn't know what they're doing. So it's important for us as consultants to let them know what to expect in the party and let them know what we expect of them and what will help them to have a successful party is that they are going to be interacting, they're going to be engaging, and they are going to learn from you how to do that. So it's important that you communicate with your host throughout the whole party, before the party, during, after, all of those things. So you'll also want to make sure that you know what method of contact is best for your host. Does she prefer texting, phone call, private messaging? Which is it? Figure that out so that you can be in constant contact with her and you are going to work as a team to have a successful party because she's going to play a huge role in it. My pro tip number two for you is to offer additional rewards. This is totally up for you, up to you, but consider offering additional gifts for your host, depending on what level of sales your party reaches. Of course, this comes out of your pocket for the most part, but the higher the party sales, the higher your paycheck, right? So this is a fun way to challenge your hosts and it could be something that you change every month or maybe you change it for each party that you do. Totally up to you, but it's just a fun way to help increase those rewards because your host is going to want to get the best prizes and the uh, she's gonna wanna save the most money. So this is a really fun um, way to do that and get her on board. Pro tip number three is all about inviting guests. I don't know about you guys, but I have been and continue to be invited to virtual parties, uh, I would say at least five to six times a week. And usually what that invite looks like is a copy and pasted message that's clearly copied and pasted. It's usually about a huge paragraph long and it says something like, um, you know, I know you like this type of product. Um, it, it's very generalized and uh, the, the person is not checking in with me, hasn't talked to me in probably, you know, at least six months to a year. And now they're reaching out to invite me to a party. It feels gross. And I'll tell you, I don't, I don't accept those invites. So what we want to make sure that we're doing is coaching our hosts to invite their guests properly. Because if they don't, you're not going to have a good turnout for the party. And then therefore, you're not going to have higher sales. So you want to make sure that you coach your host to personally message and invite their friends and family to the party. Now they can do this in whatever way, again, that they're used to communicating, Facebook message, text, whatever, but make sure that you're letting them know that they need to personally invite each person to their party rather than just adding them to the party without their permission. Right, we wouldn't do that in real real life. We wouldn't kidnap anybody and throw them into a party. So why would we do that online? So you want to make sure that, um, and you can even share that analogy with them because that's um, usually works in sharing that. People understand that. So you want to make sure that you go over that with them, and um, you can give them a guideline as to what to say. You know, make sure that they're checking in with a person, seeing how they've been, and then sharing, uh, having them share that they, you know are hosting and um, ask if they'd like an invite. But make sure that you really cover that in depth because I feel like that is one of the uh, biggest mistakes hosts make when it comes to hosting. So you'll make, you wanna make sure that that um, is covered. 
All right, pro tip number four. Now, I just talked about the host messaging the guests, and it's super important that they do that. Um, they can actually do that throughout the party, and they can also message their guests when the party is closing as well. Um, but you as a consultant should also be messaging the guests. Now, you don't want to go overboard, but you wouldn't um, ignore hosts or ignore guests when they walk into an in-person party. So why would you do that for a virtual party? If you, um, if you say hello to people in person, then you want to do the same thing virtually. So what you want to do is just message each person as they're added to the group or event that you're doing. Just introduce yourself. Um, you can kind of let them know what to expect for the party and let them know if they have any questions, they can reach out and ask you. It kind of opens that line of communication with them. And uh, the other thing that it, about that is just make sure that it is not a big, long paragraph that you're messaging them, but just a short, quick, hi, this is me, this is what to expect, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, so you can let them know, you know, if you're doing a Facebook Live or if you're just going to be doing posts, how many days is it going to be, you know, just give them a very quick overview of what to expect at the party. And, and that's going to really help um, get them engaged in the party as well, because when Facebook sees that they're messaging you back and forth, Facebook is more likely to push the party posts into their newsfeed because Facebook says, oh, they had a conversation with this person who's hosting the event that they're going to. Now that makes sense. That person wants to see these posts. So that's a, a huge part of uh, a successful Facebook party, messaging the guests. Um, the other thing you can do is if you do a live video, you can message them when it's done and check in, ask if they have any questions um, about the video. And maybe they caught the replay, so you know it, it, maybe they missed it all together and you can just um, send them the link to the video so that they can watch the replay. Um, but you can reach out to them when your Facebook Live is over. And then you can also reach out to them at the end of the party, similar to the host doing it, um, just reminding them that the party is closing and asking if they have any questions or if you can help um, them narrow down their choices. Pro tip number five, consider doing a giveaway for spending a certain amount. This works really well. People love free stuff. They don't care what it is, what the value of it is. They just want the freebie. Um, so, you know, if they spend $60, then you can give them insert gift, whatever you want. But that's a great way to really increase your party sales. Yes, it does take away a little bit of your commission. Um, however, it works really well. And in doing that, you're going to really boost your commission. So it's a give take, a uh, little give take relationship there. Uh, but it works really well. And um, again, it could be whatever, you know, your if your party goal is to have a $600 party, divide that number by the guests and figure out how much you would need to do. Um, obviously, don't give all of your commission away. I would give a small portion of it away, right? And again, like I said, the dollar amount of what you're giving away doesn't matter. I've tried everything and people just want the free stuff. They don't care how much it's worth. They just would rather spend $60 and get something free than spend $40 and not get anything. So definitely consider doing that. All right, pro tip number six party closing reminders. This is huge. So many consultants do not want to message the party guests and tell them that the party is closing because they don't want to feel pushy. This is not being pushy. People are busy. Everyone is busy and they forget. We all forget. So a lot of people will not even realize that the party is closing and they'll miss out. And sometimes I know for me in the past when I didn't do this, I would get messages from people days later and they would say, hey, is so-and-so's party still open? Oops, nope, it's not, but here's a different party you can order under. Instead of doing that, we just need to be proactive and reach out to these people and message them. And hopefully by this point, we've messaged them a few times and had you know, ex an exchange of communication with them so that this doesn't feel spammy, right? So if you don't reach out to them until the end of the party and then say the party's closing, 
it doesn't sound spammy per se, but it is more spammy than if we had had that conversation from the beginning going with them. So what this looks like is I literally just message them and I would say, hey, Amanda, it's Tara with Lemongrass. Just wanted to reach out and remind you that Amy's party is closing tonight. Please let me know either way if you plan on ordering. That is perfect. It works every time because they will respond to me either way. Whether, you know, I'm giving them permission to say, nope, I'm not going to order if they're not going to order. But I'm telling you in doing that, I have I get so many additional orders and it boosts the party sales because people don't remember that the party is closing and um, they want to support their friends. They want the products because they're great products, right? So make sure that you're doing that. And if your host does that as well, it's perfectly fine. They can reach out to their friends as well and remind them. And um, that will help too, just in case those people that you're reminding haven't had communication with you yet. At least their friend has likely had communication with them, I hope, at some point. So they'll see that in their message box. Pro tip number seven, consider using a different party format. And what I mean by this is that virtual parties have been very popular. People are getting tired of very long parties. And because of that, um, they don't want to attend parties. But if you change the format, maybe you shorten up the party, maybe you do a different version of a party, a text party or a messaging party, um, or a party via Zoom, if you haven't done those. If you change it up, they're going to be more likely to want to come. And so if you are struggling with getting party sales and you've been doing virtual parties for a while and all of a sudden it's stopped, definitely consider changing it up. And you know what? This could be something that if you, you know, if you're nervous about changing up the format, um, or trying a different type of party or different length of time, try it with your VIP group members. Ask them, hey, you know what, guys? I want to try this new party type. Who would be a guinea pig for me? Who wants to go through this party and, and give me some feedback on it? That's totally fine. And guess what? Chances are you're probably going to get some orders from your VIP customers as well because they're going to be interested in what you're sharing. All right, guys, those are my tips for increasing your sales for a virtual party. But I want to end in sharing with you that the more you do, the more you fail. The more you fail, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the better you get. Here's the thing. We all have parties that fail. We all have parties that don't get a single sale. I have done it. Uh, a handful of times in the past eight years. And there are so many different reasons that that can happen. So if you implement all of the tips that I share today and maybe you still have a party that fails, it's okay. Um, also, the more parties that you do, the more likely you're going to have parties that fail, right? Because the more you do, the more you fail. That's how life works. And it's just going to help you to learn and help you to get better at what you do. That's why I've been able to do uh, my business online and have only virtual parties for the last four to five years. I can count on one hand how many parties I did in person in that time frame. The rest have all been online and my sales have increased um, since I stopped doing in-home parties. You can totally do in-home parties. I'm not saying they're bad. You can absolutely do in-home parties, but I can tell you that doing virtual parties successfully over the last few years has taught me so much. And these are the things that are deal breakers. These are the things that will change, you know, uh, if you have your average party sale from it, you know, your average party is $200, it'll change it from $200 to $1,000 parties, right? So try these tips and uh, let me know how they work for you.